Hello, Mass Study students. Welcome to another online lesson. Today we will be starting a new unit on two variable statistics, and we will define key elements of the variable statistics. You'll know we're successful when we can identify properties displayed uh, by two variable statistical data. So lots of terms and notation. Again, if you want to pause this to write some of these down, that's absolutely fine. And I will get started talking through it. So two variable statistics. Uh, when plotting two variable statistics, we're going to have, instead of just x data, we will also have y data that represents something other than just the frequency. So we actually have you know, two things getting plotted together. Um, examples of that could be like a year versus profits or um, height versus weight or things like that where we have two different uh, variables. One is your X, one is your Y, and you plot those things. Um, we tend to put what we call the independent variable on the X axis. Often if they're asking you to identify the independent variable on a problem, just look for whichever one is on the X axis. Uh, and then the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Generally, the independent one is one that you cannot control, and then the dependent one is affected by the independent. For example, if we were doing my earlier analogy of profits and time, time is something we can't control. So that would probably be the x-axis, the independent, and the profits are the ones that are affected um, or dependent on you know, the amount of time or years that have passed. For a generally upward trend, we say the correlation is positive. Upward meaning that the graph is going up, something like that. For downward trend, we say the correlation is negative, correlation. Uh, randomly scattered points with no upward or downward trend, we say there is no correlation. So this graph that I have, which is an upward trend at the moment, just by adding a few more points, suddenly there's no trend at all because I could just as easily say it's going down as I could say it's going up. So there is no correlation. When variables are related so that if one is changed, the other is changed, we say this is a causal relationship, sort of a cause and effect, same root word. And there is a positive correlation if an increase in one variable increases in the other. So generally something like uh, height and weight often have a causal relationship. The taller you are, generally the more you're going to weigh, but that's not always true either. Uh, the opposite would be negative correlation. As one goes up, the other one goes down. Best fit, we'll be drawing numerous best fit lines throughout this unit on two variable statistics. When creating a best fit line by I, meaning that we don't have an equation of the line, we're just looking at our data. IB always wants to make sure that we go through what's known as the mean mean value, sometimes referred to as the mean distribution. It's a single point that is defined by the average of the x data, comma, the average or mean of the y values. And you just put those two together as an ordered pair and plot that point. When we describe um, correlation. We need to always use two words. Always two words. One word is going to describe the strength of the relationship. Is it good or is it bad? Here they're using high and low. High to describe a good relationship and low to describe a bad one. More common is still like strong versus weak. Strong means that yes, it's very much like a line and weak means it's kind of line-ish but not so much. So that's the first part. First word is your sort of adjective, describing the strength, describing how good of a line these points form. And then the second word is describing the direction. Is it going up? If so, it's positive, meaning up from left to right, like we read a book. Is it going down? Then we say it's negative. Now you can be going down, but be very line-like as you go down, so that's high negative. Or you could be... Um, going down, but it's a little bit more spread apart, a little more scattered, that would be low or weak or bad negative linear correlation. And once again, if there's no best fit line at all that we could have, we'd say no correlation. So we are going to use those phrases to describe 
the following four graphs. If you'd like to pause the video right now and make your best guess, again, two words for each one, high or low, describing whether or not it's very linear or not, positive or negative correlation to describe the direction it moves from left to right. All right, let's take a look at this. Well, for this first one, right away, these dots are very scattered, or these points are very sort of scattered out. But overall, like if I sort of circle this whole thing, you can see there is a trend that is going upwards. So if we start down here with these points, you know, in this area, and we end over here, it's, uh, it's definitely going from lower values overall to higher values overall. Um, you could even sort of make a little, you know, line graph that sort of connects some of these. And overall, the trend is, yes, that we are, in fact, moving up. So this would definitely be positive. However, I don't think it's a very good line. If I try to draw a line through these, you know, to represent this data, I'm not very close to a lot of my points. And so I would say this is low positive correlation. Or another way you could say this would be weak and that's a little bit more common, weak positive correlation. Positive again, meaning it's going up from left to right, weak meaning not very line-like. Um, part B, we now have a new set of data. This one, clearly we can see the trend is going downward. And so this is definitely negative correlation, but we need one more word for it. Again, at least two words, one to describe the direction. In this case, it's clearly negative, but one also describe the strength. And compared to the previous one, I would say this is much stronger. So we could say this is a high, meaning a good negative correlation, meaning it's very line-like. I could draw a best fit line that's very close to most of these points, and, um, and it's strong or high or good, any of those things. I'm going to use strong here in parentheses because it's very common. Strong negative correlation or high. You don't use both strong and high, one or the other. Now, when we get to this one here, well, I could look at just these points and it looks like a negative correlation, but I could look at these points here and it looks like a positive correlation. And I could, you know, just as easily look at those points and see that it's totally flat. Same thing with those. And so really, this is just a true sort of scatter. There is no correlation going on here of any kind. No correlation. So if it looks like you could go in more than one direction, it means there's really no direction to it at all. And then last but not least, we have one last set of data who looks, again, very linear. These points are very close together. They form a nice sort of linear progression. They're not too spread apart. So we could say high or strong and then positive correlation. Again, always two words to describe the correlation. The diagram below shows marks scored by pupils in a French test and a German test. The mean score of the French test is 29 marks. And on the German test is 31 marks. So 29 on French and 31 on German. I'm going to write that down. 29 French, and that was the X. And the German was 31. Okay. Describe the relationship between the marks scored on the two tests. Describe. Describe in words the relationship. So we want to say if this is positive or negative. And I think we can clearly see that this is positive. And then we need one more word, an adjective to describe how good it is. Boy, this one, you know, I, I think you could go kind of either way on it. But if we ignored, you know, this guy right here and this guy right there, this is pretty strong data. So I would lean more towards the moderate or strong uh, positive correlation. Um, on the graph, mark the point M, which represents the mean of the distribution. Well, we saw this on a previous slide. The mean mean value is a point, which is the mean of the X comma the mean of the Y. I wrote those values down. They were in the original instructions. And so I could write that right here, 29 comma 31. So I go to 29 on my X, 
and then I go up 31, which would be right here. They asked me to label that point M, which is 29, 31. Draw a suitable line of best fit. Well, a suitable line of best fit, I don't have an equation to use. The only thing that I said that we had to do was make sure that we go through that mean, mean value. Um, you do not need to, quote unquote, hit any other points or go through any other points. The goal is to just be as close to all points as possible. So if you're a little further away from one, you know, you sort of want to balance that out on either side. So I am going to take a stab at this. Again, I need to make sure that I go through my mean, mean point. And I feel like that's pretty good. Now, maybe I should tilt it down just a little bit, but you'll notice that, you know, I've got some distances here on these that are kind of big and then maybe not quite as much over there. So I could probably shift this whole thing down if I tried it one more time. Oops, erase a little bit here. I'm going to leave my mean, mean point. Kind of lost it there, but let me put it back. My mean, mean point was right there. And so, boy, I don't know. I could probably get a little bit... Barely missed it, but that's kind of the idea. I don't know if that's much better or not. I sort of balanced it out so I have a little bit more distance here, and then ideally getting a little closer there, but that's the idea. Um, the most important thing, again, is that you're relatively close to most points and that you go through this mean, mean value here. Uh, part C, Idra scored 32 marks on the French test, use your graph to estimate the marks I'd scored on the German test. Well, once we've drawn our line of best fit, you know, everybody's answers might be a little different based on that, but she scored 32 marks on the French. So I go to 32, and this is very much like what we did on the cumulative uh, frequency curves back in one variable stats. I follow it up until I hit the graph, and then I go straight over, and I'm somewhere in between, uh, what would that be, 32.5 is where I'm at. So... Oops, 32.5, and that would be my estimation for the German test. I think if I went with my original graph, which was a little bit steeper, I might be closer to 33, but somewhere right around there. All right. We have an activity that we'll do in class next time. And in the book, we've got page 319 and 330. And that is our introduction to two variable stats. We'll see you next time.